funnily enough, like for both of us, correct me if I'm wrong, but for both of us, the biggest success we've had with launching some kind of like a beat product or any other product for artists has been when we actually collaborated yeah. and we contacted both of our audiences and we did stuff together. So yeah, facts. And the cool thing is like now that we have this community, now that we have mini money, we're actually doing the same thing with, with other, other producers too, right? What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Midi Money Podcast. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about a topic that I hear all the time, which is kind of this idea that the market is too saturated. It's basically impossible to make a living as a music producer. And uh, here's the thing. Making a living as a music producer is really hard. Uh, basically, what we're talking about is, you know, building your own business from the ground up. And uh, building your own business is is really hard. Ask anybody who's done it. And now trying to do it in music is like that much harder. Um, so that's the first thing. Let's, you know, that's kind of the bad news. And yes, there are millions of other producers who are all trying to do more or less the same thing. Um, but honestly, that's part of the problem is that um, I think most producers are doing it the exact same way. And so, yes, it's going to be hard no matter what, but I do think that there are certain things that you can do that are a little bit different in your approach that can actually give yourself a chance to be successful. Um, in fact, super excited about our guest today, uh, which is Anno Domini, the man himself. Um, this is a guy who literally opened up my eyes to this entire world of um, what we're going to be talking about today. The whole, you know, just the world of marketing and entrepreneurship, the whole um, idea that you can approach, you know, your music production career differently, that you can approach selling beats online differently. Um, somebody who's innovated, he's changed the game more more, more times than once over the last couple of decades. Um, Adrian, AD, Anno Domini. What's up, man? What's up, man? <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. It's, it's been a crazy, crazy decade for producers, I feel like. And uh, I heard a statistic that there's something like two or three million producers selling beats online alone up to this point, which is insane if you think about it, right? And it all grew out of this tiny niche of selling beats online through these third-party sites like mp3.com, soundclick.com, and then, then of course, later on, BeatStars, Airbit, stuff like that. But yeah, man, I, I feel like for me, back when I got started in the early 2000s, like late 90s, something like that, it already felt really hard to uh, find your niche, find your place as a music producer, and, and actually make a living doing what you love to. But for the new guys coming out right now, it must feel pretty much impossible, right? Because what grew out of this tiny community of, of producers has kind of spiraled into this massive industry of, of beat selling, right? And I feel like, I mean, there's a blessing and a curse to this nowadays. Basically, everybody with a laptop can download software, can put their beats online and sell them, which, which is great. But the downside is that it becomes harder and harder to compete by trying to do the exact same thing as everyone else, right? So back when I got started, just to kind of you know, turn back the wheels of time a little bit, um, on soundclick.com, I was lucky because I was one of the pioneers of that early beat leasing model, you know, the idea of putting up a beat for sale and selling it to multiple artists at the same time. And I think I was one when of the- When was that? When, 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 did you, when did you first start? So I got started 2003. Um, there was definitely a, a couple producers who were showcasing their music, you know, making sales and stuff like that online before me. But I think I was one of the first guys to actually put a, a PayPal button on a SoundClick page so people could come there, they could instantly buy something, it automatically be sent their beats. Um, and I was definitely the first one to have different tiers of licenses and kind of professionalize the whole thing from non-exclusive to exclusive to synchronization and things like that. And really just um, put a business spin on, on what was kind of this freewheeling online beat selling community. So it's funny because at that time, I was very lucky to ride that initial wave of, of online production, right? Like the early 2000s to about 2010 was kind of the, the golden age, right, of selling beats online. And then what happened was too many producers piled in, and all of a sudden, everybody who was at the top at that time, you know, at the top of the SoundClick charts, eventually transferring over to BeatStars, suddenly saw their sales declining, and it became less and less fun because all of a sudden it was turning into this grind, right? So something that came from a place of, hey, I'm doing something I love doing and I'm getting paid for it, this is amazing, 
to suddenly being like, oh, this is my full time job. I'm not making enough money to make ends meet. I got to grind more. I got to market. I got to think of ways to, to game the system. And then all of a sudden, people were trying to, you know, get to the top of the sound like charts by doing shady things or, you know, being super salesy and just trying to compete on price. All of a sudden, the price of a, a lease dropped from like 100 bucks to like $20. So it was just becoming this this crazy environment, and it wasn't conducive to anybody really uh, getting much out of it. And that's what I realized, and I realized that I had to do something different, right? So that leasing model just wasn't going to cut it anymore if I really wanted to take this seriously and, and still be on the top of the game and, and do something that could set me up for, for basically a lifetime of being a producer, doing what I love doing. And uh, that's when I really started digging deeper into marketing and business and learning to marry not just the production side of things and getting amazing at the craft you know loving the art form of, of production but also understanding marketing principles delivering value catering to our audience of rappers and and trying to do something a little bit different than what 99.9 percent .9 of everyone else out there was doing and that's when i kind of came across this concept of funnels which isn't some you know, mysterious, uh, weird, diabolical thing. It's, it's literally a marketing principle that's been around for a long time. It's very well established in the industries, in multi-billion industries like fitness, education, um, nutrition, everything like that. And I basically just took those teachings, uh, I internalized them, and then I translated them to the beat selling industry because that had never been done before. So obviously that took a lot of work, you know, trying to make this work for our audience of rappers and singers and still over deliver on value and create something amazing. But sure enough, I, I actually managed to carve out this little blue ocean, right? This little space for myself because I was literally the only person in the world at that time using funnels to sell beats instead of using a website, right? So it was an exciting thing. And then for a long time, like I remained the only person and I kind of milked that for as long as I could. It was awesome. It was fun. And then, of course, you came along at some point. Too. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so for me, um, you know, uh, some people might know my background or if you, if you, if people caught the last episode or whatever the podcast were, you know, for me, my background had more been like, I've, I've been doing this for a long time too, as far as music production, engineering, having a studio, you know, 20 years plus at this point. Um, but didn't really move into selling beats online till, uh, I guess about, what is it? Six or seven years ago now, something like that. And so, uh, so I kind of started, you know, when, where you're talking about where it was already like super you know saturated in in like I, I, kind of like the tail end of sound click and stuff like that and um and so but still i kind of did what i saw all the other producers were doing like all right let me let me just try this i wasn't uh you know i certainly didn't think of myself as like a marketer an entrepreneur anything like that i was just you know I was a producer i was a guy who makes beats and and does music so i don't know let me just quickly see what everybody else is doing um, and then I kind of got into it. Like it was kind of fun. I got a couple, you know, and I got a couple leases on SoundClick. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, well, what can I do like, um, to maybe just get a little bit more of an advantage to learn a little bit more about how to get slightly more traffic to, you know, to, to my store or whatever. Um, and so I started following, you know, every producer, right? Every producer I could find, um, certainly anyone who seemed like they were doing well. Um, and so of course you were, you know, you were one of those producers and uh, I remember specifically, like I was scrolling through Facebook um, and I saw that you were, I, I forget if it was an organic post or an ad, whatever it was, um, and uh, that you had posted, I clicked on the link and what I saw there was completely different than what I had seen like from everybody else, right? Everybody else had the same looking website. It was on, you know, whether if it was on SoundClick or, or BeatStars, what, you know, whatever the platform was, everybody, you know, had the same, the exact same thing. And you had something different. It was like, there was, there was a video and you were telling your story and you're, you're, you know, explaining the value of, of what you had there. And I can't remember now if it was either for a beat pack or for your membership, but either way, it was, it was like this whole different format, this entirely different thing. Um, and I remember looking at like, whoa, like this is, this is something really different. This is kind of cool. Um, you know, and then from there, that's what kind of opened my eyes up to learning about this whole world of, like you said, you know, funnels and, and really just broadly, you know, marketing and entrepreneurship and, um, and, and all the, all the possibilities there. And so, um, the, the funnel thing too, I, I think it's interesting. You said like, it's not like this evil, weird thing. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what a funnel is. Um, the way that I think about a funnel and the, the way that I like to explain it is it's really just talking about what is the journey that your audience goes on, meaning like what happens from, um, let's say a potential, you know, a rapper or singer going from having no idea who you are to having some kind of awareness to then, you know, knowing who you are, having some kind of engagement, um, you know, liking you, 
trusting you. Um, then eventually, you know, we'll get into this later, like, you know, getting them over onto your platform. Um, and then eventually ascending up to like, hey, the most value that I can give this person is I can actually, you know, sell them a bundle of products and services or, or you know, I can get a result for them. Um, and so it's really just talking about that journey. How do you get from here to here to here to here? Um, and so people sometimes, I think people think it's a software. Funnels are not a software. Like, yes, software can be part of that process. Um, you know, people think it's, I don't know, they think it's a pyramid scheme. They think it's whatever. And it's like, no, it's like literally just that process. So if you are posting beats on YouTube and there's a link in the description of of that video that goes to your website, you have a funnel. Like that, that's just what your process is. Um, the only difference is when people talk about funnels, they talk about it because we're being aware of it. And so it's like, well, how can we do that on purpose, right? And that's what I saw you were doing is like, oh wow, there's like, there's first there's this step and this step. And like it takes that, you know, that rapper, that singer kind of on on a path where for one thing, like you're, you're, you know, giving them more value at every step, right? Um, and there's, there's just all these advantages that's, that was so much different, that is so much different than what so many other producers are doing. And I think that um, that's like been a big part of what, you know, I think we've both been uh, the benefit of, the reason why we've been able to build, you know, Legion Beats and Nano Domini Beats to, to what it is, to what they are today. And now, you know, how we've been able to, um, you know, being able to teach and, and hopefully inspire some other people to do some of this stuff too. So I'd love to kind of just go through some of those specifics um, of kind of some of the ways that, uh, you know, that, that producers watching this are like, okay, cool. That sounds great. Like, what do I do? You know? So what, I don't know where, what would be like the first thing maybe to start with as far as creating that journey? For sure. I mean, you hit on a lot of great points there, and I'm sure we can kind of dissect them a little better. And yeah, I think it's so important to understand that every producer right now has a funnel, right? It's it's not some weird, mysterious thing. You have a funnel if you have a YouTube page, a SoundCloud, something like that, and you link people back to your store, that's a funnel. The only difference is there's very basic, simple funnels that don't perform very well. And then there's more complex funnels that convert people well, that um, provide value. You understand the marketing foundations and that's what creates something that's, that's uh, fantastic for the artist and the, and the singer to engage with. So with that being said, like the very first step when it comes to thinking about funnels is actually leading with value, providing something that's valuable to your audience of rappers, your audience of producers. I mean, you know, some producers might be selling sound kits to other producers, whatever the case may be. Um, but really it comes down to providing value up front. Because what most people are doing right now is they think, okay, so I have a beat, I have a sound kit, whatever. Uh, what I want to do is like immediately link to that in, in my store and try to make that sale right away, right? So they create content on YouTube, they make an Instagram post, and then underneath they will say, click here to purchase this beat, right? So what they're doing is they're leading with a sale. And you have to understand that at this point, whoever is browsing through YouTube doesn't know who you are. They don't know why they should trust you. They don't know what the value is. They haven't been on that journey. They're not part of your community, right? They don't know what you stand for. So the chances of them actually clicking that and buying something right away is, is like this this big, right? It's uh, I mean I don't want to get into like metrics, but it's, it's less than one percent, right, of the people who actually find your content and then purchase something from. You. That being said, if you lead with value, so you actually provide something for free instead of that immediate sale, you're going to get way more people actually coming on board uh, of your community and engaging with your content. So what I'm talking about is actually giving away, for example, a freebie, giving away a free loop kit. Uh, it doesn't even have to be those things. It could be um, a free video course that you put together to help artists, for example, or it could be a mixing and mastering PDF showing them like, hey, once you have a beat, this is how to make your vocals sound better and get a great track out there, right? It can be any number of things. And again, by leading with that value, not only are you showing the artist that you genuinely care, and, and I mean, you do, right? You should as a producer, that's at the end of the day, that's what we're trying, we're trying to do, right? We're trying to cater to artists to make them happy and provide value. And also at the same time, it makes it much more likely that they're, they're gonna click on that link, right? They see something for free. Of course, it makes it 10 times more likely they're gonna hit that button than if you're just trying to say like, here's something to purchase, right? So that's, that's the immediate first step. Yeah, no, I think that's huge. I think that that's such a common mistake is like, you know, the first thing is here's a link to go buy this thing. It's like, ah, you haven't, you haven't gone through the steps, you know, I think a common, um, you know, analogy that really makes sense is like just in any relationship, like you have to build up, you know, you start with the conversation, you, you know, what you, you tell a joke, whatever, like you don't go straight to, you know, whatever, let's get married. Right. It's like, no, let's, <laughs> let's start, let's, let's start things off slow. Let's add a little value. 
Um, and I think part of what you're talking to is sort of this concept of like the law of reciprocity, right? Which is just a fancy way of saying like, hey, when you when you give value, when you do something for somebody, then then it it grows that trust, and then you know they're they're going to want to do stuff for you, and and it's that kind of um, elevates. And and um, another really cool part about that that I want to mention is that um, when you do that process, when you say, hey, here's this free thing. The best way to do it is say, hey, in exchange for this free thing, um, I will, you know, let's trade. If you give me your email address or maybe phone number, I'll give you this free thing. And there, there's a couple reasons why that's the way that we do that. Um, for one thing, there's this concept of traffic that you own versus traffic that you're borrowing, right? And by traffic, by the way, we're just talking about people. We're just talking about the attention of people, the attention of your audience, right? And so I think a lot of times what happens on uh, social media, whether if that's YouTube or Instagram or whatever, is that we get really caught up in thinking the whole point that like the goal is to get views. The point is to get subscribers. The point is to get followers. Um, and the reality is none of that is the point. Like, yes, those can be a means to an end, but like that's not the point, right? The point is ultimately to give value um, to, your, to your audience. And the best way to do that is to get them from that platform over to your platform because um, for a couple reasons. One is when you have somebody who is following you on Instagram, um, you don't own that traffic. That's Mark Zuckerberg's traffic, right? He owns Instagram, he owns Facebook. If you have a subscriber on YouTube, you don't own that traffic. That's uh, Larry and Sergey, the dudes who run Google. Like that's their traffic, right? And the reality is they can change the rules on you at any time. In fact, this happens all the time. It's just the natural life cycle of social media platforms, right? Uh, you look at Facebook. My Facebook fan page is literally dead at this Yeah, point. actually, that's a great <laughs> example. So like, so uh, when when did you start your, your like the Anno Domini Facebook page, like fan page? Oh, it must have been like, like 10 years ago or something like that. And for a while, you know, it was building momentum. It was crazy. Every post I made would get so much engagement because it was being shown to everyone, right, in my little community that I was building. And then all of a sudden, Mark Zuckerberg decided to just flip that switch. And he was like, guess what? If you want to reach this audience you built on my platform, you're going to have to start paying for it. And then, of course, it got increasingly more expensive to start reaching them. And eventually, like the ROI, so the return on my investment, uh, just wasn't there anymore, right? It wasn't worth it. And at this point, actually, my Facebook fan page is declining. It's actually going down. It's not growing anymore. And I have no incentive to actually engage with people there to post content. Kind of sad, but that's what happens when you're dependent on a platform, yeah, right? Yeah, no, and that's and that's the game. And it's like, it's how it goes, right? Because the mistake that so many businesses made, whether if it's producers or anybody made uh, with that is they invested all this time and energy and effort and money into building up those numbers, like their Facebook followers, right? Because, you know, at the time, right, if you posted a link to like, hey, go check out this beat, you probably had, I don't know what the numbers are, but I don't know, a, a very large percentage of that, uh, of what did you say, 70,000 people, 80,000 people? We're, we're up to like 73,000 or something now. You know, it hasn't grown much over the past year, so it's been hovering around there for at least like two years. <laughs> yeah, so probably back, you know, a few years ago, you post something up and I don't know what that, let's just say 30,000 people. people. Yeah, thousands <laughs> of people would see that link. They'd click over to it and, and you were able to sort of, you know, engage with them and, and keep talking to them and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but then he changed the rules overnight, right? Um, and, that's, and that's fine. It became a pay-to-play platform, um, which happens to be like the best pay to play platform in the universe. So like, then it becomes about like, okay, well now how can I use this to my advantage now? But um, the point here is that if all you had done was grown those followers, it would have seemed like a good idea up until that day. So what's the solution? The solution is you, how do you convert that traffic that you're borrowing into traffic you own, which is doing what I know that you were doing, which is as you were getting those, those followers there, you were as quickly as possible getting them over to your platform, meaning getting their email address and or phone number. And, and once they do that, now it doesn't matter when those rules change uh, because now you actually can create that direct relationship. You can, you can email that list whenever you want. You don't have to pay Mark Zuckerberg every time, right? Um, and so that, that becomes super important. And the reality is every social media platform goes through those life cycles. You know, right now we're recording this, you know, at a time when Instagram still has organic reach. You can post on Instagram and, and reach a, a decent percentage of the people who are following you. And that's great. Use that to your advantage, but don't think it's going to last forever. Like I can 
almost guarantee that they're going to go in that same direction. Um, and then at that point, fine, use it the way that it's meant to be used, but make sure that you're taking advantage of now of getting people over to your platform. And the way to do that is exactly what you talked about before, which is like, you know, offer them something for free to get them into your, get them onto your list. And now you can actually start talking to them. You can start talking to them, you know, on a one-to-one -one basis whenever you want. And that's really kind of another point too now is I think that is so important that a lot of producers are missing, which is actually building that relationship, right? Uh, if you look at kind of that that traditional model that I used to do that, you know, I would say about 99% of producers do, which is their funnel again is, you know, post a beat on YouTube, have a link in the description that goes to their website and that's it, you know, or, or same thing on social media or whatever. Um, when you do that, think about that. Like the first thing they see is they type in, you know, whatever type beat, then they see your beat pop up, but the picture is of a rapper or a cartoon or something else, right? Then hopefully they click that link. If they do, they go over to your website. And now maybe they see your logo and some beats, right? But there's no, there's no relationship there. They never find out, you know, who you are. And so um, what you want to do, what what's worked really well for me, and I know has worked well for you, is like how do you how do you tell your story to those people? How do you start that relationship? How do you start an actual conversation with those people, with your audience, with those rappers and singers, so that you can, for one thing, provide way more value for them because you understand what they actually want and need. Um, and for another thing, it shows them the value that you have, right? Um, you could have the exact same sounding beats as somebody else, but if somebody connects with this person and feels like, oh yeah, like, you know, I relate with something with with their story. I, I see the value in what they're doing here. They're gonna wanna work with this person as opposed to this guy that maybe they've only seen their logo and heard their beats, right? It makes, it makes a huge difference. It has, it certainly has for me. I don't know. I don't know if you want to speak on that too, like if that's made a difference for you. Yeah. Well, one thing I do want to say real quick is that I feel like the byproduct of this whole funnel thing is that it's kind of taken us back to the days where a producer and an artist actually had a personal relationship, right? Mm. They knew about each other. They liked each other's work and they got together. They knew, you know, they created something incredible. And I feel like that kind of got lost along the way, you know, towards the tail end of the 2000s and, and going into this decade right now is that literally people will just browse websites, buy a faceless beat, record something. They never know anything about the producer. They probably don't send their track back to the producer afterwards. And that relationship is just so one dimensional and, and really, you know, streamlined towards uh, just a transactional relationship. Right. And in a way, like this way, it kind of brings the two back together and puts the, the art form back into the, the producer and artist relationship to some sense. So that to me is like another kind of bonus of this whole thing, like the byproduct, which, which I think is a lot of, a lot of fun. I, I love getting tracks back from artists who say like, hey, man, I really connected to your story um, and I love the beats. I wanted to record something. This is, this is the end result, right? To me, that's like endlessly inspiring and, and exciting and motivating. I mean, I'm sure you get that too. No, it, it's uh, it's funny you say that too because it's like it, it's funny how some a lot of the stuff that is actually the best business practices is also just like ways to be a good human. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like it feels good to like hear back from you know, like you said, like the artists that are working on you know that made a song to your beats, and they and then and when you've opened up and told your story, a lot of times you know you'll see like I get emails all the time of people telling me you know their story as artists and how man like when I heard this beat, it really I connected to it emotionally. It, it, you know, reminded me of my situation that might talk about whatever tough situation they're going through and how, you know, them being able to did, you know, do that song is like a form of therapy to them and all this kind of stuff where it's like, oh my God, cool. Like I, I I'm really changing, you know, there's, there's an actual connection here. Like there's, there's uh there's some real value to what we're doing. And so, yeah. um, it's like, for one thing, it's just, it's good business, but it's, again, it's also just like, it's just like good relationships. It's just good. Um, you know, it's just like the right thing to do in a way. So I think that's pretty cool. All right, so so far we kind of talked about, you know, creating this uh, journey on purpose, right? This this funnel, this whole this whole thing of, you know, leading with something with value, um, you know, converting that traffic from traffic we're borrowing from these social media platforms into traffic we own, meaning how we can have these one-to-one -one relationships through, through email, for example, and the importance of kind of building that relationship and telling your story. Um, so I know another thing that I definitely picked up from you was, um, like when, when I talked about like that first time that I saw that, that page that you had, that was like, oh, this is, this is something different. I noticed that what you were offering was actually very different than what, again, 99% of other producers are offering. And what 99% of other producers are offering are a beat lease, right? So 
Um, I feel like you kind of, I shouldn't say kind of, I think you innovated this this concept in our world of of creating this different type of offer. So what uh, what can you say that, you know, can maybe help other producers understand how, how to do that too? Yeah, so what you want to be thinking about is like, how do you cut through the noise, right? How do you provide something that stands out that's different from what everyone else is doing? And like you mentioned, 99.9% of producers are just offering beat leases, right? That's like the one product. That's the first thing that their audience sees, that the rapper sees, the singer, whoever you're catering to sees. So what I suggest is that you start thinking bigger picture and actually put together something that is not just a single product, but actually a bundle of products and services that is put together to be irresistible to your audience. So the problem with, let me back up for a second. The problem with offering just a beat lease is that in this day and age, like certainly back then when I got started and definitely now, a beat lease is a commodity, right? And when I say a commodity, really what that means in, in economic terms is just um, a product or a service that you can buy for pretty much the same price at any number of places, right? So for example, a gallon of milk or a loaf of bread or you know, filling up your car with gas, right? How do you decide what gas station you're gonna fill up your car at? Well, there's only really two considerations. It's either gonna be the cheapest one or it's gonna be the one that's the most convenient, AKA the one that's right on the corner of wherever you live, right? And the only reason you go for the cheapest one is because you don't mind driving a little bit further to save a little bit of money, right? Now from the point of view of a producer selling beats online, you could try to compete in this game of commodities on price, but just you know keep bumping down that, that uh, value of the, of the lease that you're offering, but it's already incredibly cheap, right? So I feel like that's just eventually gonna be a game of losers where nobody really wins because you're offering leases for a dollar or something like that, right? And there are producers that do that. They try to compete on price and it doesn't really go their way because it's impossible to scale a business selling $1 beat leases, right? Yeah, not to mention, sorry, not to cut you off, but not to mention, like, even if you sold your beat for pennies, like, usually the real problem that most producers have is that people aren't even finding them in the first place. You know what I exactly. mean? So, so really, so even price almost doesn't even become an option for a producer. It's like the only, feels like the only way to win with that old model of like, if you're trying to rank for YouTube keywords, like that, that is the game that most of us are, have been playing. Like the only way to win is on convenience to be that video that pops up on top, which is essentially, you know, the gas station that happens to be on the corner, right? That seems like the only option. So then it becomes like, well, what do we do? Like, I, I can't compete with those guys. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, like you said, so convenience is the only way. And the most convenient thing to a, a rapper is to literally just browse through the top 10 tracks on, on a beat store website or to go on YouTube and just type in dread type beat and see what pops up in the first five results, right? It's not convenient to browse through 2,000 search result pages on YouTube until they happen to come across your beat, right? And considering there's millions of producers, it's pretty much impossible to get to the top of those search results, to get to the top of those charts. And even if you do and you manage to somehow fluke at one time to consistently do that for every beat you release, incredibly hard, right? And the reason why we're using this analogy of commodity is that in business terms, a beat lease is also a commodity because at this point, there's millions of producers. I mean, sure, some of them aren't at that level of quality that maybe you feel like your beats are at, but there's still thousands of dope producers out there selling beats online, right? So of course, in business terms, it is a commodity. So what do we do to, to counterbalance this whole thing? Like, how do we win in a game of selling commodities? How do we win as a gas station, right? Well, the whole point is that we don't engage in that game in the first place. We don't want to be in a game of commodities. So by taking ourselves out of that, by creating this blue ocean, like I mentioned earlier, like this funnel thing, by actually putting together a bundle of products and services, you're actually differentiating yourself and you no longer have a single commodity product, but you actually have a bona fide bundle of products and services that's gonna be irresistible to your, to your target audience, right? So when I'm talking about a bundle of products and services, that could, for example, be uh, 10 of your best beats, plus a uh, mixing and mastering PDF, plus a shout out on your Instagram, plus uh, a five minute phone conversation with you to discuss the album, that the artist is gonna make with those 10 beats. Now that is something that only you can provide, right? It's personal to you. It's, it's your audience on Instagram you're leveraging. It's your personal time you're dedicating to that art, artist. And by bundling these things together, you're actually creating a, a truly unique special offer. And that's that should be your calling card, right? That should be the first thing that the artist sees is something that shows them that you're actually genuinely interested in helping them. And just by the way, 
it also converts so much better because you're actually putting together something that's, that's irresistible, that provides so much value that it seems like a no-brainer to the artist, right, compared to just buying a beat lease off a single producer that they know nothing about and have zero connection. Huge, huge. I know the first time I, I had what, at the time, I considered like real success was selling beats online. Um, it was actually, it was a, a launch around Black Friday. I think it was my first launch that I did around Black Friday. Um, and of course, I was basically just following, you know, your model. Um, and I did exactly what you're talking about. It was like, okay, I'm not just going to sell a beat lease, but I'm going to have, you know, a bundle of beats plus, you know, some different things that I know my audience really wants. And uh, that was like the first time when I really, you know, had success. I remember it was, you know, I, I made like five figures in a week, which at that time, you know, for me, it, it was a lot. And, and, you know, for anybody selling beats online, that's a lot. Yeah, um, that's huge. And so, so yeah, so this this is so big. And, and just to kind of piggyback off that too, like um, the, you know, just by adding a bunch of stuff, you're, you're, you're already winning compared to most producers. But really, I, I, I like to hone in on this a little bit of like, you know, Partly is like it, it starts with understanding like who is your ideal customer. Um, and a lot of times I think we it's easy to be kind of lazy with that and be like, well, I'm a producer. So like my audience is, let's say, rappers and singers. So it's probably like a dude in his 20s or 30s. And, and that's it. Right. But like the more specific you can get about exactly who that person is, um, the more you can actually serve that person, the more you can kind of adjust and create that whole, this whole journey we're talking about and really customize it for that person. And when you know who that person is and what, you know, what are the things they want the most? What are the things that they're worried about the most? What motivates them? Um, all that kind of stuff. Now you can actually put together that special offer very specifically in a way that's gonna to cater to them, that's gonna help them, that's gonna give them the most value and is gonna be irresistible. It's gonna be something that they actually, you know, want way more than, you know, just somebody who's who's selling beats or even more than somebody else who is selling, you know, let's say a more random bundle of products and services that they're throwing in. There's like, no, this is like focused in on, you know, I'm gonna help this very specific, you know, type of person, this this very, you know, this artist that's that has these goals and hopes and dreams, I'm going to actually help them get the result by, you know, crafting that together. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I also want to say that the reason why I, I really strongly believe that this new way of selling beats, this funnel system, is not going to get saturated like the old way is because of that exact reason, because everyone's customer avatar, this person that they're trying to cater for is slightly different and everyone's special offer is slightly different. Not everyone is just offering a beat lease for 30 bucks, right? So that means that everyone actually has their own niche. Everyone has their own specific product. And that means saturation is basically zero. Yeah, no, I think that's huge. And I, I'm glad um, I'm glad you brought that up because it is something that comes up, you know, fairly often of like, oh, okay, cool. I see, you know, you and AD, you guys are having success. And now, okay, there's some of the guys that you're teaching, they're having success, but, you know, it's, it's going to get saturated or it's already saturated because, you know, I saw 10 other guys do it or whatever. Um, and, and there's a few things I'll say about that. You know, one is, again, there's literally millions of producers who are just selling beat leases and it's such a tiny percentage who are even doing any version of this. Um, but the reality is even if a hundred percent of those, whatever we, whatever the number might be, two or 3 million producers that are on, you know, that are kind of doing it that old way, if they all switched over, it's still going to be a better experience for the customer. The producers are all going to make more money because, again, of all the stuff we're talking about, especially that last one of that, you are actually, you're giving more value. That's kind of a basic of business. The more value you can actually give to somebody, the more money you're going to make, right? Because it's worth more to that person. Um, and like you said, it becomes about not just selling a beat lease, but selling this bundle of products and service that's very specific that that shows the value that you have, that shows the value that you can bring to that specific audience that you're catering to. You know, I know with Legion Beats, you know, we tend to have, you know, a certain genre of beats that's a little bit, you know, you know, our, you know, we do a little bit more on like, for us, we're pretty much like trap, R&B, pop, a little bit more on like sort of like Hot 100 side. You know, for you, I know you're more on like the boom bap side and and without getting super deep into it, the the people that we serve, there is crossover, but but there's a difference. And so you'll notice not, not just, you know, that's a big part of it is is the niche the style of beats you make is part of that but also like the additional products and services and things that we offer there is some difference because we're catering to that person specifically so that again that's like another reason why it's not going to get it's not going to get saturated like what we're talking about here is um really the 
uh, tried and true stuff that's, uh, you know, psychology, marketing principles, really just just human nature that's been true for hundreds of years, thousands of years, like forever, right? Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not really something new. And now the part that is, is new maybe is the exact technology of, okay, maybe we're using this software to build some of these pages or whatever. You know what I mean? Maybe it's this exact sequence of, you know, maybe it's five free beats and then this thing or whatever. And yes, maybe those things evolve as the marketplace evolves, as technology evolves. Um, but the, the concepts that we've been talking about, they're going to be true forever. Like giving value first, you know, um, building that relationship, uh, to where you actually have a personal connection with your audience, you know, making sure that you are taking your, your audience and, and, and making sure that you can actually communicate with them directly and not relying on, you know, a social media platform, you know, all the things that we talked about to me, it's not, those, those are not little tactics that are going to go out of style. That's just, that's just how, you know, human psychology works. I mean, I know like I'm, I'm a marketing nerd. I've read, I've read a lot of marketing books and stuff <laughs> like that. I know, I know you're, you're pretty good on that side yourself. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but, man. I feel like it's my fault, <laughs> bro. It honestly is. You really, uh, yeah, you absolutely opened this, this whole world up to me. And then, um, and then I, and then I got really deep into it, but, um, that's, that's another thing that I really like to make sure that, um, I, I get across is like, yes, there are very specific tactics that work right now, right? Uh, whatever that might be. Maybe Facebook ads have a huge ROI right now, return on investment where like you can put money in and get more money back. But like, I bet you in two years, four years, five years, maybe next month, like it won't happen, right? Like that's, that's just how it goes. The same thing as like, uh, uh, Google ads, right? That, that used to be a really easy ROI. It was like easy money, you know, whatever it was, I don't know, five, 10 years ago. Um, and then again, just like the social media platforms, it's just the life cycle of how these things go. Um, but when you understand the bigger picture behind why these things are working, then you're like future proofed, right? I think correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that's why you've been able to innovate so many times in, in this field of selling these online is because it's not because you got lucky with a tactic that like, oh, I just randomly put a PayPal button up on a sound click page and oh, I guess that worked. It's like, no, it's because you understood why that would work. And now you understand, okay, now the marketplace has evolved, technology has evolved. Now here's kind of the next thing. Yeah, no, exactly. You're completely right. So uh, who knows what's going to happen 10 years from now, 20 years from now, right? Maybe we're all beaming commercials into our eyeballs or maybe we're watching holographic, I don't know, beat production videos or whatever it is. But the point is like, it doesn't really matter too much. All of that is just tertiary to the fact that you understand psychology, you understand human nature and, and you understand marketing. And what I do want to say as well is like, to me, this feels like the most natural thing in the world. To me, like trying to force the sale down someone's throat feels super unnatural and kind of gross. But this whole process of like building that relationship, to me, it's like it's community building, right? And it's kind of bringing us back to the roots of creating music communally. And that whole community thing, like it extends also to, to the producers as well, to the extent that now all of a sudden a few producers are kind of opening their mind to, to this new funnel system. And we're actually creating a little community around that too. So even within the production community, um, I feel like we've, we've seen some big strides some big movements towards you know, providing all, all these principles that you talked about, providing value, creating uh, a relationship that's reciprocal and all of this, this kind of stuff. And those principles is actually uh, what we found at MIDI Money on too, right? So I don't know if you want to talk about that, but like to me, that, that whole experience has just been, it's been so much fun and so enjoyable and just amazing to see producers coming together, actually helping each other out, being forthcoming with uh, providing information, um, providing support, and just becoming, you know, like a little a little community onto itself. So it's it's just been incredible to see that. Dude, it's it's um yeah, I, I don't even know. Like I, I'm honestly like I, I get a little emotional about it, honestly, because it's <laughs> like having that community, like I'm serious, like it it's made such a huge difference in my life where um, you know, being being a music producer, being a music producer that's also trying to um, you know, launch a business, there's like so much that you have to do. Like, man, this shit is hard. Like this, this is not an easy game to play. Right. Uh, but we do it because we, cause we love to do it. Um, but it becomes like, you know, at a certain point, if I'm talking to, uh, a friend who's not in this, or I'm talking to my girlfriend or I'm talking to whoever, um, they don't really get it. You know what I mean? Like they, they haven't been through the same thing. And so, 
having a community of other producers who like actually are going through the exact same thing at the exact same time is so valuable, like on so many levels, like, you know, on the most basic level is like, hey, I'm stuck. I can't figure out how to do this thing. Can somebody show me? And what what I love about the community we have is that it's really got this whole um, culture of everybody helping each other, which is something that I think sometimes is is missing in music, that for some reason, there's some people who feel like, the way for me to be successful is to bring this other person down. Like I need to step on this person to 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 kind of rise up. And um, you know, I'll I'll say too, just to kind of back up a little bit in my story, like I feel so grateful that the the mentors I've come across along the way in my in my music career have all been the opposite. Like just just a a, a random kind of throwback one. The the first studio I worked at, it was called Tarpan Studios, owned by this dude, Narda Michael Walden, who was like, you know, big time producer back in the 80s and 90s. Um, he, he won, you know, Grammys. He did like, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, Whitney Houston song, um, from the bodyguard soundtrack. Oh, what's it called? They yeah, play it all yeah, the time. Of course, yeah. yeah. They recorded that right here down the street. Like he recorded that. He got a Grammy for that. Um, anyways, tangent, but, uh, the point is I started, that was the first place I interned at. And I remember his engineer, this dude, Jimmy, um, great guy. Um, and he was the first person to show me pro tools and teach me all this stuff. And I realized like he was literally teaching me how to take his job like essentially right um but there was never any of that he was just like just always so giving um and and i feel really lucky that i've had that along the way um and i remember like when i came across uh you know you and and at first you know i didn't even reach out to you i was just like all right Anno Domi, like this guy's doing the stuff i want to do this i'm going to try to copy all this stuff from the outside and try to do it or whatever um, you know, and then eventually finally reached out to you. Um, I think the first time I reached out to you, I was like, Hey, can I just pay you for some consulting or whatever? And, and that was, that happened to be the first conversation we had. But, um, I remember I was struck immediately by you, you basically saying, Hey, let's work together. Like, let's, 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 you know, let's not compete or whatever. Like let's, let's do some stuff together. And we did stuff together on the Legion Beats and Nano Domini side. And then, um, you know, and then from there, uh, actually I remember too, we were both talking about, uh, we were at a, at a conference. We were both talking about how, Hey, like we'd both love to get to, um, you know, we're at a point in our careers where it's like, it would be fun to start teaching this stuff to other producers. And we were kind of both looking at each other, like, it sounds like we're both about to like, maybe launch a course. Like, it's, you know, what are we going to do? And, uh, you know, again, instead of like competing, it was like, well, why don't we team up? Let's do this together. Um, and the result of that has been so much bigger and so much better than what I can imagine. Certainly I would do on my own. And so, um, I guess that's sort of my long way of saying like the community that we have to me is a result and a reflection of that, of, you know, getting that from, from you and, and from what we've done. Um, and, and everybody in the group is like that. It's so awesome. Like, you know, people are posting, you know, they have some issue that they need help with. They, uh, you know, they, they found some like idea, something that works where instead of being like, oh, I'm going to hoard this and keep it to myself. It's like, like they immediately post it in the group, like, yo, check it out. This thing is working. Like everybody should be doing this. And so the result is that we all, you know, rise up together, which I just think, I think is really cool. I feel super grateful that I've had, honestly, I've had that in most of my career personally, while also seeing that so much of the music, you know, uh, industry is, is kind of the opposite. Yeah, no, that's so, so crucial. So, so key. And I really believe in that notion of, of bringing up the producer community, because I feel like if we lift up the entire community, we make everybody better off and it's a win-win situation. It's, it's much more conducive to getting a positive output for everybody than, for example, trying to compete with that, that other guy. You know, you see that other dude, he has like more Instagram followers than you. He has, he's higher on the beat stars charts and you're immediately they're like, okay, well, how can I copy what he's doing? How can I be better? How can I like try and, I don't know, undercut him? How can I talk trash about him or whatever the case may be? Sure. But really what you should be doing is like reaching out to be, to that person and just being like, hey, why don't we collaborate? Like, this is, this is my skill set. This is my audience. This is your skill set. How can we complement each other? And how can we benefit from the synergy of actually coming together? Because when two people come together, you're not just getting the, the combined output, you're actually getting exponentially more out because all of a sudden you're bouncing ideas off each other. Um, you're, you know, you're, you're having this viral effect as well if you're sort of talking to both of your audiences at the same time. And all of these kind of things just kind of add up to something that's extremely beneficial and, and positive. So to me, like part of the mission of, of what you and I teach and what we do, and I know initially I feel like I had to kind of convince you of this, right, when we first met. 
I, I feel like you, like most producers, your first reaction was like, ah, I don't know, like this, you know, do I really want to be opening myself up to, to working together with somebody else, you know? But I feel like once you were over that and once you actually saw the vision and you understood that, and now, of course, you've internalized that, and you've sort of taken it to new heights. But um, once you make that mindset switch, the, the, the positive effects that come from that and the knock-on effects are just substantial. And really, it just makes everything more fun, too. Like, to me, it's, it's more fun. Like, as producers, we kind of live these solitary lives, right? Like, we're mostly, like, at our studios. We're hanging out. We're making beats all day. Sometimes we don't even, like, see the light of day, right? So the idea of actually working together with someone else, like, building a community, coming together, instead of just trying to do everything on your own all the time, like, to me, that is also, like, a lifestyle choice, and it's, it's more fun. Definitely, definitely. And it's funny, too, like, like, I think I mentioned earlier with um, talking about, you know, your relationship with your with your audience, that a lot of times the stuff that actually is best business practices is also just like good human practices. It's just like being a good person and, and helping people out. Right. Um, and it's the exact same thing in this case, where it's like, um, again, like, like, you know, you could see all these other producers as competition, or you can see them as like, hey, how can we work together? Um, and then for one thing, it just feels better because now we're like literally friends and having fun and doing that stuff. But even if you just look at it from a like greedy business position, like I have, um, you know, this relationship with you. I have this relationship with all these other producers that more and more successful are now we can do stuff together that actually is more beneficial, that grows both of our businesses more. We can, you know, talk about each other's uh you know if we have a launch going on we can share that with each other's audiences and like um so it's 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 kind of cool to see that where a lot of times when you do this right i feel like the things that are actually um the best business practices again are like just also just being a good human and like if you get results for people if you help people um then ultimately that is what's going to build your business yeah, no, that's, that's so key. And, and funnily enough, like for both of us, correct me if I'm wrong, but for both of us, the biggest success we've had with launching some kind of like a beat product or any other product for artists has been when we actually collaborated yep. and we contacted both of our audiences and we did stuff together. So yeah, facts. And the cool thing is like now that we have this community, now that we have mini money, we're actually doing the same thing with, with other, other producers too, right? Like, I've been sharing, for example, this this one kid, Temper Beats, um, who's part of the community. I've been sharing his new launch that he just uh, put out. Yeah, shout out to Ollie. Ollie from Temper Beats. Good Ollie dude. from Temper Beats, yeah. And there's actually so many guys in the group who are crushing it. And the reason they're crushing it is because they're embracing those same principles, right? The providing value, developing a relationship, working together with other producers, helping one another. And yeah, not just Temper Beats. There's guys like uh, D Lynch in the group. We have who else help me out? Like some Man, of these guys are so many. Um, you know, one one that comes to mind is uh Jacob. He goes by my best friend Jacob, that uh maybe some of you guys have heard of because he's been absolutely crushing it. He was actually one of the first people that um, you know, that joined our community a long time ago. Um, or it feels like a long time ago, but you know, we've we've only been around for a year, but but it feels like it. Um, you know, and he's somebody who's done so much at this point, you know, he's generated over six figures in revenue from, from his funnel. And of course it's not all about the money. He's also, oh, that's crazy. yeah, which is nuts. Right. Um, you know, and he's, you know, uh, uh you know, I don't want to take credit for what he's done, but, but, you know, him being in the community has been awesome. He's done stuff like, you know, he got a, a rust placement working with ill mind. He did the, um, you know, the, the soundtrack to, uh, that Travis Scott documentary that was on Netflix. Like he's done all this kind of stuff. Um, and so just so cool to see like, him in the community helping other people as well and you know guys like uh well how about uh wishmaster and big shot beats right yeah. these are dudes who you know just just like anybody else in the group originally just you know they bought the course and they kind of came in hoping to learn some stuff um and then they just started absolutely crushing it and doing so well and not only crushing it but giving so much value in the in the Facebook group, in the community, um, helping people out so much that um, those were guys that we ended up reaching out to and be like, hey, is there any way we could like make this more official and have you guys be, you know, coaches where people have access to you, you know, live one-on-one -on -one or, or, you know, in a small group. Um, and so super grateful to those guys uh, to, you know, to have done that. So it's it's been, um, you know, we could go on and on, but it's it's just been awesome to see, you know, um, so many producers have have success. 
Yeah, and the cool thing is 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 the diversity of offers and, and things like that that are being put together. Like my best friend Jacob, for example, he did a funnel selling a VST to producers, right? Providing immense value in this awesome uh, software package. Uh, whereas like Wishmaster and Billy and D Lynch and some of these other guys, like they're putting together offers for for artists. So it just goes to show like how dynamic this thing is and how diverse it is and how you can apply the same principles to any number of things, right? It doesn't matter if necessarily you're a producer who wants to um, offer beats to artists. You could also be a producer or a DJ offering, I don't know, any number of other services. You could be doing exclusive beats through your funnel. You could be selling shoes. I know Wishmaster try that for a minute. Um, yeah, I mean, I actually received an award for both selling beats to artists. You can see that one up there. And also one for selling sound kits to your producers. And they were both founded on the same principles of just providing value up front building that relationship and so on. So like the, the funnel system or the funnel, whatever you want to call it, methodology, uh, way of thinking, way of life, I don't know. <laughs> but the whole funnel thing, you know, it's, it's very diverse. And again, it, originally it comes from like any number of industries, right? It's not like something specific that we like invented for the beat industry or something like that. It's just built on solid marketing fundamentals, but also just solid human nature. The idea of providing value, building a community, doing all that great stuff. So. That's why I love it so much, and that's why I'm, I embrace it, and why I kind of champion it to some extent too. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's been it's been awesome to see the success with you know. I mean, we started this whole thing off talking about how hard it, this is, and and you know how much of a challenge it is, and so to have these examples, to you know, to have you as an example, which was a big thing that really helped me, not only with like you know learning the tactics and stuff, but just seeing like, oh my god, like it is possible to have this level of success, like really made a big difference for me. Um, and now seeing, you know, all these other guys and, and other, other producers, um, also doing it is, is super inspiring. And I think that that's something that, uh, I'm like, it inspires me to keep going. And it also, I think is something that I think other producers will see and be like, oh, wow, okay, this is possible too, which is super cool. Um, you know, and you mentioned like, yeah, it's about, you know, sort of this, this funnel, you know, concept and really, you know, again, really all that means is like making, you know, creating your business on purpose, right? It's really about the bigger picture of just, you know, understanding the psychology behind why these things work, the the principles behind why these things work. There's the stuff that um, is effective, you know, no matter what, beyond any little specific tactics or things that might change and evolve, the technology evolves, the marketplace evolves, all that kind of stuff. But the reason why, again, you've been able to do what you've been able to do and, and now, you know, me and some of these other people too is is really understanding that that big picture, which uh, to me is is really fun and something that has been super rewarding. And um, I know that that's, you know, you started to mention, I think like, you know, that people are um, using these things, of course, to sell beats, but also, you know, crushing it, selling things like uh, uh, kits, you know, for producers, um, even VSTs for producers, um, all, and then even even outside of music, right? Um, and and so that's that's part of what I love about this game is that you can really apply it to to anything. Um, so that's that's been um, that's been really cool. So. Um, I guess I would just, uh, you know, wrap it up here with, Hey, if, if, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about, you know, what we do, if you want to come hang out with us in that community and find out how that works, um, head over to midimoney.com slash go. And, um, yeah, I think that's it. Anything else as far as where maybe people can, can hit you up or anything like that? Yeah. You're always welcome to reach out. You can find me on all the usual places at Ammo Domini Beats and Hey, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been fun. Oh, bro. Anytime. We will definitely be doing this again. Thanks, man.